I love Missouri. I, you know, yeah. I, the, the St. Louis, the city and the county, as soon as they could grab power where I live, they did. Um, we're just now coming off lift, like the lockdown. But our governor was way hands off, was like, hey, we're going to test. We're going to take things slow. We're not going to get rushed into this. I love Missouri. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's really good to hear. Well, I hope he does move. Uh, I mean, Elon was threatening that as well, and it sounds like they caved to him. But, um, you know, Joe, Joe could do his podcast from anywhere. Uh, and uh, I hope he takes advantage of that because it's a very, uh, it's a big statement. And I like that he's, he might have a little bit more freedom. I understand he's, he's worried about getting censored. He, 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 what I like about him and your shows as well is you bring on all types of opinions and that's that puts you at risk of getting deplatformed. Uh, and, and this may be something that he's doing to, to basically hedge against deplatforming. I mean, he's had a Alex Jones on there who's the target of all types of deplatforming, right? So um, I'm, I'm certain if he wants to keep the caliber of his show up and get all the most esoteric views on there, he's got to find a shelter from people who can cut him off in a heartbeat. Yeah, and the, and the idea, the, what people want to talk about is the edge of chaos, right? They want to talk about right at the edge between what they know and, and they understand and something new. Most of the time, that's going to be edgy conversations. And if we're letting the large scale te uh, like tech companies decide which of those edge of chaos ideas are too far and we don't want people surfing there and they right. block them out man, th this gets ugly in a hurry like you know and I, i'm somewhat shocked by this too because you, you have trump out there doing this executive order against twitter and uh some people cheering it on some people not and i'm i'm like I, did you ever see that movie on cambridge analytica i didn't no uh -uh. so i'm forgetting its name it might be data breach i think is um but anyway, it, it's, it's a really interesting story about a woman who is a whistleblower. I think she's now in the blockchain space. But uh, they went through how they can utilize Facebook as a mechanism for, um, for social unrest and a mechanism for apartheidism in political systems. And they first tested this out in like smaller countries in Africa and the Caribbean and showed great success that they could pretty much guarantee somebody a political spot if they use their data platform. And the Trump administration was their largest customer in the last election. Right. So he clearly is tuned in and one of the largest customers of manipulating social media data to his favor. And now he's out attacking Twitter as if he doesn't like that feature when he uses it. Uh, so I'm, I'm really perplexed by this. I, I don't like the idea of a fascist control of, hey, I'm just going to executive order Ford Motor Company into my uh, domain space and have them make ventilators. Or I'm going to take over what Twitter can do so I can politically control it. I mean, that scares the hell out of me. I don't like what Twitter and Facebook are necessarily doing on, on, on um, deplatforming people and, uh, and what's going on with the First Amendment. But they are a private company, and everybody using those platforms agrees to the fact that, hey, we, it's our servers, man. We don't like what you put on here. We're going to cut you off. And there has to be you know, some, some level of that, given you know, some content is probably abusive. To, you, know, you start getting to child pornography and all these ethical issues of there are victims involved in moving this information around. When, when it goes there, I understand they have to step in and, and get rid of this stuff. Um, but the, 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 you know, maybe someone will build a blockchain-based system that folks will migrate to that's completely uneditable and uh, you know, a social media platform that no one can edit. That'll be a really interesting experiment to see. Wow. That. But um, a few have been built. They just haven't taken off. It's really hard to get people off of Twitter and Facebook because there's so many people there and the network effect is extraordinarily powerful. But yeah, it's only valuable because your people are there, right? Exactly. And in, unless you could port that network from one place to another, I, you know, I can't replicate the news information and digestion situ like uh, system that I have on Twitter. If I ported it somebody or somewhere else, it would be extremely difficult. Somebody yeah. would have to architect it and find it and... I, I don't know. I, I don't yeah. think it can be done. Yeah, it wouldn't have the mass. It'd be really hard for all those people to exit. Um, and so you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have the numbers there. But um, yeah, it's certainly Orwellian when you hear of, you know, the government's now going to get involved. And I'm, I'm not, um, I, I don't think this is new. Like if you look at what Snowden put out, um, they're meddling with this already. The government's already involved in filtering some of this stuff. Uh, they're already involved in, in scanning this stuff through the NSA. So it's not like they're not in there. That's a little bit of a farce to say that, oh, we're finally going to step in and control Twitter. It's like, no, you've been kind of doing it on the, on the backdrop without a lot of people knowing it. And now you're just going to make publicly make a statement that you're really doing it. What did you think of, uh, of Twitter putting a, a fact check below the president of the United States? Long overdue, considering he's been threatening war with uh, with North Korea. Sorry, yeah, North Korea, right? I mean, doesn't that go against their community standards? 
Interesting. You know, no violence. Oh, right. but I, the president can talk about the nuclear football in North Korea. That seems a little uh, violent to me. Um, so I'm not a fan of that. Um, I know it's his largest platform, and there, there are aspects of what he does that I sometimes agree with. But um, I'm not a big fan of, of them, uh, of any of the jingoism that comes out of that. Uh, that doesn't seem to be productive at all. Um, nor, um, you know, some of the banter that goes on there seems to be just childish. But um, whatever, it's his, it's his choice to do it. Uh, if that's the way he wants to play politics, that's his choice. Um, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I try to stay out of that game. I'm not much of a voter. Uh, so I, I've kind of given up on the whole system that I, I really don't think it can be changed through a vote. Um, I think it's more changed with individual action in the economy. I think you have far more influence with where you spend your dollars than where you spend that imaginary vote every four years. So I, I, I try to put as little effort into that as possible because I know it's just distractionary bandwidth I don't have, I don't have the RAM for.